Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Our next Christmas fabric collection is called Glow by Robert Kaufman. I have a stack of fat quarters. I have charm squares and I have two and a half inch strips. It's going to be really fun to see what we can come up with with these fabrics. This is our project for today. It's a stocking ornament and it features several of the prints from this collection and I especially like this little bird. It really inspired me. I hope you like it. Let's get started. For my glow Christmas stocking ornament, I really wanted to feature this little bird. And so I measured it out and determined that I wanted a window about this big. It's two and a half tall and three and three quarters across. And so I drafted a pattern with these, um, you know, with enough room to accommodate the bird. So it's three and a half across. I just gave myself a little bit extra wiggle room in the window. <laughs> and, um, and then I just sort of drafted my pattern to be proportionate to the, to the bird. And then I cut a stocking pattern from the 50 weight Pellon non-fusible interfacing. And then I cut two pieces for the lining from this um, sort of a lights print. It's sort of a bokeh print. And, um, and then I cut the back. And remember the back is gonna go in the opposite direction from the front. So let's get started. Here is my foundation and here is the little bird. And if you look closely, you know, the bird is not on all the prints. This print looks kind of the same, but I couldn't find any birds on it, but it does however have pickles. <laughs> and this one has no pickles. And this one, I think this one does have the birds. Oh no, and then this one also has no birds, but does have pickles. This one, which is not the same print, you can see this has the wreaths, and this one has only ornaments. And this one, the ornaments are all going in the same direction. And this one, they're, uh, you know, 90 degrees. But this one does have some birds. Here's one. Let's just say this one has bird, <laughs> has one bird. You know, I, these are fat quarters. It's just the luck of the draw. So maybe this is the side of the print that has the most birds and then the other side doesn't have as many. So I went ahead and got a full yard. I got a full yard of the black and the white. And sure enough, there are some birds on here, but they're pretty far apart. Anyway, this one had four birds in one uh, fat quarter. So this one works really well. Um, I consider the top of this little motif to be right here at the top of the bow. There's a bow right above the bird. And so um, I wanna center this with about a half an inch below, a half an inch above, and a half an inch to the left, and a half an inch to the right. It's nice and straight. And I have a chalk pencil, so I'm gonna draw this and sort of fussy cut it. I'm not gonna use this for the cuff, although I did try it as the cuff and it just was not as effective. But I'm gonna set it right here so that the bottom edge is right into that little there. And I'll kind of pin that. And then I have some other coordinating fabrics. I just chose these, the lights, the holly, the red with the trees, and the peppermints. And then I cut a four inch strip right along the, um, the selvage from each one of my coordinates. Got some scraps. After a couple of practice runs, I determined that I could go ahead and cut a two inch piece from each one of these. And that is just a very um, sort of economical way to, um, you know, kind of make yourself a little kit for the project. And then something really fun for the toe. 
I drafted this kind of so that the wreath would fit in the toe. And I, when I looked at this fabric, I saw how these wreaths were in half. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would fit right there. And sure enough, it does. And it's not even really that hard to get it, you know, right there in the toe. So later on, might as well just do it now. Never mind, we'll do it right now. I'm going to kind of, I set it down so that there is a, you know, like a seam allowance sort of right there. And then I'm just gonna trace it with my white chalk pencil and cut that out right on the line. So that'll be the toe. So that's going to be right in the toe and that's gonna be so cute. I love the pink and the turquoise. I think that's what really makes this look modern and fun. Anyway, okay, so let's get started. I'm going to use the holly for the cuff. So I'm gonna set this like this. I have the turquoise thread in my machine. I just thought it would be fun. I'm gonna seam this with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do a long stitch, like kind of a basting stitch. I find that, you know, I make a lot of mistakes and wind up having to take the stitches out and it's a little bit easier if I've only basted. it. So it's gonna be about like that with the top of the bow showing. Here's the seam. And so I'm going to fold it back and press it. Then I'm looking for a strong contrast, so I'm gonna put this light colored one beneath. And again, a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance with sort of a basting length on the stitch. And then I'll fold it back and press it. Okay, now I like a formula. And so this is two inches out to the corner. So I'm gonna match this corner. And then this one I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave about a quarter of an inch and draw a line, draw a line, and then cut it right on the line. And I'm going to, so the trees, they go up and down. So <laughs> you just kind of have to decide if you want, this one is right side up, this one's upside down, or do I want it like this? I think I'll do it like this. So again, I'll stitch with a scant quarter inch and then um, fold it back and press it. And then I'm going to set my ruler again to the corner here. Now, even though this is way off the edge of the foundation, I'm still using that because I want that angle. So a quarter of an inch in here and all the way to the corner. I think I'll use my white pencil. And then I'm going to trim that right on the line, directly on the line. And now I'm really glad that I set the print with this tree right side up because I almost lost that one. And then we have the peppermints, the candies. This um, print comes with a light background or a dark background and I chose the dark background, but I don't think that would matter. So I will line that one up, stitch it, flip and press. And again, a quarter of an inch and then out to that edge. And cut exactly right on the line. Now I'm gonna flip it over and kind of trim this so I can see the shape a little better. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky to get it exactly to line up. And so just remember that you do have a quarter inch seam allowance, and then you also have a seam allowance around the outside edge. And sometimes the curve of the wreath doesn't exactly match up to the curve of the toe, but it always looks super cute anyway. So let's just say I'm lining it up like this. And I'm gonna just kind of like check when I flip it over. And I think that's gonna be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up, stitch it, flip it, and press it. Now I'm flipping it over to the back and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around. Here we go, here's how it looks. Now I'm going to add some machine embroidery along each of these seams. I'm going to use this turquoise thread. 
I just want to do something different. And I know you might be horrified, but I would really like to add some of this um, gold rickrack just for a little bit of sparkle. I think maybe right there. But of course you don't have to. <laughs> Here's how it looks. And now I'm going to line up the one of the lining pieces and I'm gonna sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance at the top, just straight across the top. And this is the back and this is the second lining piece and I'm also going to sew that straight across the top. Now I'm going to match these up right sides together and I like to fold the seam allowance down toward the front and back, in other words, away from the lining. And I'm matching up that center seam and then I'm going to pin that down right at the seam allowance. And the same thing over here. So I'll turn the seam allowance down toward the front and back and away from the lining like that. And then I'll just continue to pin all the way around. I like to start down here so I remember to leave an opening. So there will be an opening right here for turning and then just all the way around, matching up the edges and pinning. Now, if you're a clipper, I'm a pinner. I have the clips and sometimes I use the clips like if I'm sewing with vinyl, but <laughs> for the most part, I'm a pinner and um, it works for me. So I'll pin this all the way around and then I'm going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance starting right here, back stitch, and all the way around and then to here, stop and back stitch. Then we'll clip the edges and turn through this opening. Here's how it looks. It's all sewn up. And now with my super sharp Kai scissors, I'm going to clip into these inner curves here and here. And then I'm going to trim the seam allowance all the way around. Here's how it looks all clipped. You can see the clips right here and trimmed and then I will reach in. Oh, and then I didn't really trim it right here because I need a little bit of an allowance to, um, to tuck in and sew up. So I'll reach in and turn it right side out. I still have the turquoise thread in there. So I'm using the turquoise pretty much for everything so far. <laughs> See how that, um, that little wreath, that little sort of feather tinsel wreath print looks in the toe, that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and poke this out and press it and I'll be right back. Now I'm gonna turn this seam allowance in like that. It doesn't have to be super neat because it'll be way down inside the toe. And I'm just gonna pin it and I'm gonna top stitch it close to the folded edge. It looks like that. If you are a perfectionist and if you are a perfectionist, you know it. So you can go ahead and switch to white thread to match. Now I'm going to tuck the lining inside all the way and have a look. Um, for this collection, I'm going to use the, the metallic gold and white baker's twine for the hanging loops and the bows and all the little extra details. So let me get this on a needle and I'll be right back. So I'm just gonna sew this through, tie it off. I have my glue gun warmed up and ready to go, but we don't really hardly use it for this project, except I like to use it on the bow. I'm just tying a bow around one side of the loop, that's all. Nothing tricky, it's just like tying your shoe. So here's the loop. Here's the bow. And then before I get any further, I'm gonna add a little smudge of glue right to the center here and kind of press the loops together. So there the knot is at the top of the loop. And these two are um, securely kind of glued in the center. And then I'm going to tie off the streamers and a little overhand knot before the <laughs> ends come unraveled. Here I will describe the pattern. You start with a rectangle that's seven and three quarters tall and 
This is five inches from here all the way to the outside. Three and a half inch square. So make it three and a half by three and a half. And then over here, go down four and a half. Three and a half, three and a half, four and a half. And then just curve out to make the toe. It's not hard. You can do it, it's easy. And if it doesn't look right, just start over. It's only paper, right? You can do this. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.